Oh, there. Did you hear that one crack? Yeah. Ah, well, I sure did. Now, hello, YouTubers. Joe Kersey here and Paul Bennett now with me on Abraham Lincoln's birthday, February 12th, 2016. Well, properly speaking, it's not his birthday because his birthday was in 1809. So, no, it's not his it's the anniversary of his birthday, to be more correct and accurate and precise. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the kind of guy I am. I bet you I'm fun to live with, aren't I? No, well, your sure. birthday is not January 8th. Well, it, it's January 18th. Well, I'm not going to give you the year because, you know. Well, that's not. No, 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 no. We don't know. It's, 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 it's way people can use things to access crap on, although I'm sure it's easy to find out. No. No more of that no. A lot of times there are a lot of things that will be a nod, but not, this won't be a nod. Um, now yesterday, you know, we're going to, you know, we're generally going to talk about lead poisoning stories today, maybe, but that might lead to something else. But having said that, um, as I mentioned, I may have mentioned, uh, my neighbor Liz called me yesterday. Around, around around 8 o'clock in the morning. Actually, 10 to 8 in the morning. Um, and uh, she wouldn't know if I'd seen anything going on in her yard uh, the day before, which would have been Wednesday. I mean, she called me Thursday, pointing out if anything had happened that I saw Wednesday. Excuse me. And I said, no. I said, I'd gone up to see my attorney. Uh, and... I did notice that I didn't notice any new sticks in the yard, but I did notice that uh, there were a lot of footprints in her snow. More, well, you know, more than when I had last driven past her place on Sunday, coming back from church. Well, she said uh, there was white flag sticks in her yard, which, of course, I couldn't really see because there were white flags against the sun. You know, I can see the, the flags that have the orange flags on them or the pink flags on them or the green flags on them, but I can't see the sticks with the white flags on them against the snow. And, uh, and I said, well, I said, well, what are they? And I, I said, was there anything written on them? And she said, yes, it says, uh, uh, Utility easement, utility easement, and there were like at least three of these things, and more disturbing than the sticks were there were orange X's on trees indicating that somebody's getting ready to cut them down. Uh, and uh, did I know anything about? It? No, I didn't know anything. Squat about it, but you know, utility easement, you know. They've already redone the water lines on her place. They've already redone the gas lines on her place. The electric people have been out, you know, several times and staked where they want to do poles. They've delivered the electric poles and so forth. The only thing I can think is that, that somewhere along the line, they've uh, uh, either, either the electric people have decided to rethink where they want their poles, and they've, they're not using AEP on their, their stick markers anymore, which I, I doubt that. They've been very consistent about that over here and over there. Uh, I think what happened is uh, some Gennaro... Contract. O, 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 no, I don't even think it's a contract. ODOT per, person came down, you know, probably working... For Kokosing, who's going to do the extension down to this 
the joining up of the work that's being done on my part. Oh, where? Yeah. And in fact, Kokosing, I think the Kiko, the Kokosing, really the Kokosing guy was over across the road talking with Mr. Howard today. Really? Yeah, for about, about two and a half hours. And then they all left around 10, 10 15. <laughs> but I, I think, I think they're having a powwow about the joining up. So I think this may, you know, it is either the Cocosing people coming down, working off the ODOT Gennaro plan, or ODOT doing a, a staking. You know, because see, on all of the ODOT plans I've gotten, I got thinking about this, and Paul and I were talking about this earlier on. It doesn't, it doesn't say gas easement, water easement. Well, it does sometimes say water easement. It, you know, but it just says utility easement. UE, utility easement. And I think that's, uh, I think somewhere along the line, whoever was out there was way off the mark. <laughs> Meanwhile, yesterday, as I pointed out, the as plunder tree removal people were there and talked to Henry. Uh, and he, uh, some, you know, Liz called me, I, you know, Let's put it this way. As Plunder didn't show up today and no trees were cut down, which means there no, you know, it's, it, nothing's going to happen until Tuesday at the earliest. Um, so, um, this, you know, and, and, you know, this just seems very oddball. It's interesting. She's never once said to me about where the actual take line was staked. Mine was very clearly staked with iron pins. She's never said they've been out there driving iron pins. Oh, and she didn't have the, uh, like, uh, red, white, and blue flags marked. Well, the, the red, white, and blue flags are, are index flags for the baseline that the surveyors run, you know, upon which they make reference to everything else in their survey. Right. But that's just that's just an arbitrary line. That's right. like that's like if I if I said I want to draw a plan to this house and I'm sitting here at this <laughs> table right here and I shot a thing up to the GPS and I put a nail into the floor and I shot a line this way and that way in a straight line, yeah. you know, uh, and how to draw a plan to this house. That's yeah. that's that's all that all those that's all the three the three colored flags are. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm saying she has never gotten it. Well, anymore. no, because because all of those were on my my side of the road. Yeah. No, I mean she they don't an arbitrary line is an arbitrary line and from that you can you know, you can move the world. If you have to, yeah, so, yeah. that's like when they surveyed France, for, you know, to determine the length of the meter. You know, <laughs> they just did arbitrary triangles, and then they sat down and figured out what's, you know, you know because they wanted to reference it to the to the to the diameter of the of the Earth. You know, okay. yeah, and I think the meter is. Well, the meter is defined as this iron, you know, this, you know, this palladium platinum bar in a vacuum somewhere. But yeah. uh, it was it was originally designed to represent, I think it was like one one hundred millionth of the distance from the north pole to the equator, or okay. one ten millionth of the, you know, I mean, it, it had a ref it had a geodesic reference. All right. Now, back in now Paul's going to go off into the can. Uh, and God bless him, because we all need to do that. Um, I actually slept for eight and a half hours straight last night, because I didn't wake up to take a leap. Which I normally do about every two and a half, three hours. On the other hand, when I weighed myself this morning, I weighed ten... <laughs> I weighed over ten pounds heavier than I did last night, because of fluid retention. I'm going to have to rethink the physiology of some of that. That's a work in progress. Now, we are going to talk about lead poisoning. Uh, 
I, I often think that I'm very lucky to have. See, here we are. We're 10 minutes in and we're getting to the point. We often think that uh, you know, they eliminated lead from gasoline, and so, you know, and they've no lead in paint, so, you know, kids can stand up on the windowsills and munch away to their heart's content now without getting lead poisoning and this, that, and the other, or, or scrape, scrape paint off the wall with their fingernails. Did kids do that? Apparently they did. Um, you know, and 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 for those of us who grew up with with cisterns, you can't have lead paint on your metal roofs. You know, <laughs> where the rain falls on it goes in the cisterns and you use it for drinking water anymore. Uh, I will say that uh, we had lead paint on the roof where I grew up. Now, generally, we used the well for drinking water, but sometimes the well got dry. Well, it didn't get dry, but it got. We'd use we'd use the well primarily for uh, flushing the toilet or taking a bath. Come on over here, Paul. Don't go over there in this. I haven't moved. Well, yes, you have. You're farther away than you were. <laughs> you're going to, and plus, you're going to this sort of meditative stance. This meditative. That's okay. I'm merely pointing things out. We're all trying to be YouTubers here. Anyway, um, now. My first experience with acute lead poisoning, well, my only experience with acute lead poisoning, uh, was when I was reloading ammunition. I was a very avid reloader up until 1993. I would still be an avid reloader if I could reload it outside, you know, up, not in the basement. It's just a as you've seen in my house, there's just a lot of stuff that I can't, you know, well, I could, but I'm unwilling to shift about. In any case, uh, so I'm down there. Uh, I think this was, I think this was a result of me reloading 357s or 44 Magnums. And I was using, you know, bare lead semi-wad cutters. Uh, for those for those of you who uh, are unfamiliar with reloading, watch Paul's nephew's and my honorary nephew's channel, Ed Space Capital B, you know Capital E Ed Space Capital B Ed B, and he explains a lot about reloading. You know he's retired military and he he, he reloads a lot. And he's got a lot of reloading videos up there that are very interesting. Uh, suffice to say, I I reloaded uh, quite a lot, and you know saved all my brass and reloaded them. And I, I usually use semi-jacketed hollow points, uh, but but if you're just doing plain old straight target shoot, well, that's that's a bit of a over expense. And uh, on the other hand, it it does keep your barrel a little bit cleaner than than with using lead. But I thought, well, I'll, I'll load up some lead semi-water cutters. And I, I did a, I probably did about 300 rounds of these things one one afternoon, you know, which takes a while because I'm not that fast at this activity. And even if I have everything preset, because when you have everything preset, you always have to check. Don't you? Check, 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 check. And, uh, so I go upstairs, you know, when I'm done, and uh, all of a sudden, all my joints, when I say all my all my big joints, all my big, my knees, elbows, hips, yeah. Yeah. and the neck, neck always hurts. Uh, 
Yeah, it had. It had no war. I mean, I, it, I was immobilized. I had to lie down on the floor. That was why I could still get down on the floor and get up from the floor easily. That's where I uh, ruptured my ACL and, things. and had a bit of a stroke. Uh, anyway, so I'm on the floor, and I, I, I hurt. I mean, I, I, I hurt. I took aspirin. I, mean, I took some other stuff I had. It didn't help. Uh, three hours, and then and then it it ebbed away, and I got thinking, what? what was, and I thought it hit me. I had acute lead poisoning. And that's how acute lead poisoning presents. Not chronic, acute. And uh, interesting. You know, it's interesting. Uh, when I when I was in you know, when I was in medical school, this was when they had just started the whole thing about lead paint. And you have to eliminate paint from buildings. You have to certify buildings as being lead paint free and things. Now, the reason lead paint was used because it was less expensive. Well, and it lasts longer. And there were. It lasts longer. Yeah, because they were talking about this the other day. And they said it was interesting when you go and you got a thing of lead paint. It was heavy as crap. But if you got. Regular paint without lead, it was way lighter. I never saw any paint without lead until after they passed these laws. Oh. Did you? <coughs> yeah. All growing up. Oh, really? Well, maybe that reflects the two year difference in our ages. Um, you know, you know. The thing about lead paint is, you know, they don't want kids to gnaw on the windowsills. You know, I'll tell you, if you've got a child that's gnawing on a windowsill, smack him on the ass. You know, there, there are other problems going on in his, his lead seeking behavior. I just, I don't. Well, anyway, so they, they the problem is not. Just banning the lead from paint, that's fine. Ban the lead from paint, that's fine. It's like, you have to remove it. Well, fuck, why? You know? Just tell your kids not to chew on the windowsill. Or, here's an idea. Make, when you see them chewing on the windowsills, make it so impressive on them that they, do, they never do it again. Don't try to cajole them. Say, here, honey, don't do that. No! You know, just, it's like, it's, it's like instantaneous <laughs> don't do that! A child raising technique that is underused today. Let me assure you. I didn't say beat the child into pulpness. I find applied terror a very effective tactic. Ask any of these guys in ISIS land. <laughs> they know what I'm talking about. You want to steal that car? We're going to cut off your hand. You want to look lustfully at some woman? You want to put out your eye. Although, how can you look lustfully at somebody in a body bag? Which is essentially is where most of these guys are going to end up. Well, I, I, can't, I can't speak to that issue since I don't look lustfully after women. Anyway. Now, I look lustfully after guys a lot of times. I mean, come on, it's so wrapped up, the only thing you love to see or is the run. Well, and they can say a lot of stuff with their eyes like, Fuck you, do Don't even 
Don't even think about it. Get away from me. Don't. <laughs> See, I've got a, you know, I have a list here. I have a plan. Uh, so, uh, now, when I, when I was a boy, my dad rarely rented equipment for the farm. You know, you know, it's not like some guy, he, he, he's not like a friend of mine that buys, you know, every piece of equipment known to mankind, you know, you know, $300,000 for a whack. Uh, talk about capital intensive. Uh, my dad would occasionally rent stuff. Now, we had, see, what happened was, when, when he and my mother got married in 1990, 1934, uh, in 1936, they bought the place where I grew up. Uh, after living in a her one room apartment in Lebanon, which was hellishly hot, you know, to which my dad's mother, who was very prone to mind grade headaches, as all the Kurzes were and are. Well, I have thank God had one since I well finished medical school. Leaving that aside. Uh, uh, they moved out in 1936 to the place that my dad had bought. I actually looked up the mortgage when I worked for the lawyers there when I was in high school. $3,000, uh, the first 30 acres were $3,000, and this was in, uh, uh, well, 1936, you know, the, you know the, the middle of the Great Depression. First 30 acres. They paid uh, the first, the, you know, the first, yeah, the 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 the, the first two front fifteen yeah. acre fields yeah. along Green Tree Road, right? yeah, yeah. Um, and threw it off my stride, um, but um, anyway, they uh, they went up to Michigan as they did. Uh, pretty much every year with his family, and they brought back about 10 or 12 pine trees that they had dug up out of, you know, the upper peninsula of Michigan, and they planted them along their driveway. And over the years, they go up these magnificent, towering, 60 feet, 70 feet high, white pine trees. There were a couple of scotch pine trees uh, that they had down by the end of the, and you know, by the road. Uh, but along the driveway, very much, very much like the pine trees you see out here, although minor Austrian pines are not nearly as tall as the ones that were where I grew up. Um, what would happen is, uh, from time to time, and fortunately, not often, but you had bagworms. Now, I had a bagworm infestation on my arborvitas a few years back, and I dealt with it by one, cutting the one tree down, and the others, I did get poison and spray on the, on, 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 on the two trees that were affected, and I was able to head it off. Uh, having said that, uh, what what he used to control this and to get the spray up sixty some feet in the air was he rented a, he rented the sprayer okay that ran off the power takeoff on the four day end tractor okay um, and it was lead acetate you know this big bag of pink powder that you mix into the spare container that you mounted on the tractor and then you know there's this thing and, and there's a pump and then you and you and you drove on the tractor and you sprayed it in the air on the, the trees you know, and let it drip down and ideally the whole thing and it killed it killed the bag worms well it didn't kill them in their bags, but it killed the 
it remained on the tree such that when they emerged, they licked it and they died. Uh, it's an interesting life cycle of the bagworm. Look it up. In any case, uh, he didn't do that. He didn't. He didn't have me. Do, he didn't. He didn't do it. He had me do it. I'm on the track. The spray is coming back and hitting me in the face. Oh, none of these masks and shit like that. You know, it's just no safety glasses. Although I had my glasses on because I wore glasses. It's like, it's like, oh. Like this, yes, there's this fine mist is coming back. Lead acetate. Lead acetate is what it is. Was. Well, it didn't seem to harm me, but on the other hand, at this stage of the game, who can tell? So, so then, I got, Paul and I got time about this. this when he got home from work today. And I said, well, you know, when I was a kid, I I had to follow behind the plow. You know, when my dad would turn up a rock, I would, you know, fall in the furrow. And that, you know, starting when I was probably about seven up to I was 13. And you, 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 you know, you went in the furrow. And then if there's a rock, it turned out you, you got it and you scamped over and put, put the rock against the fence row. You know, just... So it wouldn't get, you know. Now, right. over years, you know, most of them get put over by the fence row. But, but, you know, there's, you know, it's amazing what churns up. And now, here's the Ford A.N. tractor, you know, boop, 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 or, or when you're plowing, you know, in second gear at full throttle, you know, four-cylinder flathead Ford engine, you know, you know. The Model A Ford engine, or the, actually the Model T, you know, the most basic of engines, gasoline engines, which they've eliminated, unfortunately. Most reliable of engines. Yeah, because they work. So, you know, I'm, I'm within about, let's see, let's see, near here, and I'd say maybe another two feet back. And that's where the exhaust was, you know. And that's loaded gasoline. And you're saying something. Well, no, I, no, 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 no. That's a separate. That's a separate issue. This is me walking down in the in the plowed furrow. But oh. then Paul and I got talking about how uh, uh, when when uh, you know uh, riding on one of those springy seats on, on the on the mowing stuff. You know, we did this too. Apparently. Behind a truck. Behind a, a truck. Yeah, a tractor or a truck? Tractor. Yeah. Tractor. Well. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you get this stuff right in your face. And so, you know, we get, we get that stuff, you know. And um, it's, I guess it's amazing we can both walk and talk and, you know, I can I can do. I can still do math in my head, although maybe not as much as I used to. I like to do math in my head when I travel because, you know, you know, like feet per second stuff. You know, because if you're traveling at sixty miles an hour, that's eighty-eight feet per second per second. No, eighty feet per second. That's not falling. That's you know. You know I also like to do calculations of speed when you hit the ground. That's 16 feet That's per second per second. Out. Or is that 32 <laughs> feet per second per second? I'm sure somebody will correct me. That's that. all out. Well, <laughs> it's called mush, is what it's called. Sludge, mush. Splat. 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 Um, I never understood people who got upset about that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff in my line of work. And yeah. It's like, you know, people, you know, when I'd go in to breed 
burnt kids' wounds, you know, the crusts off their wounds, you know, and they'd go, Aah! and they did, because it hurt them, but there wasn't any too much, you know, you couldn't do too much about it. And I said, doesn't that bother you? I said, no, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I mean, you know, birth kids. Well, a lot of these, you know, I mean, just, just, just a lot of stuff that bothers other people just doesn't bother me. It just doesn't. I don't, I don't revel in it. I don't take joy in it. I don't take pleasure in it. It's just, it just doesn't bother. Born, yeah. Pardon? Sorry. How can newborn have? Yeah. Mm. Oh no, I'm not talking about a newborn. I'm talking about somebody, uh, uh, some kid that got burnt in a house fire or something. Oh, I thought you. Well, they, you know, they have a third degree, newborn. you know, scar that you have to debride off, you know, cut off. Newborn. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, mean, I right. just, just, a kid, okay. a, a, a kid squalling doesn't bother me. It just doesn't. You know, you know, people, people screaming don't bother me. Now, if they have a reason to do it, yes. Okay, that's not going to bother me. But if it's just bullshit. Well, well, and if and, and if like they want to throw a team. Well, if there's, if there, and, and if they're doing that, you know, that even bothers me less. <laughs> if that could be a true statement using English language. No. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm indifferent to a lot of stuff that seems to move. Um, you know, in other words, Hallmark cards, and I have nothing to talk. Talk about with each other. I I love you, mother. Said little now. <laughs> Here's one that they ought to put out. I love you more than words can tell. You know, that's a Mother's Day card. One of those you know, made made for money quote holidays unquote. That's the first page of the card. I love you, mother. Said little now. I love you more than words can tell. Flip. Yeah. Here comes the ironic closer. Closer, not closure, by the way. That's another obnoxious word. And then little now went out to play and left her mother to work all day. That was one of my mother's favorites to, you know, lay on me all the time when she didn't think I was pulling my weight. <laughs> Good job, Mom. Oh, well. You're saying there was never a corresponding uh, P-O-M-E about, let's see. I love you, Dad, said little Jack. I love you more than my ass can crack. Mm, but then, can... but then, Jack's dad corrected that later that day and left Jack too sore for him to play. I just came up with that. And on that note, I'm going to say bye-bye, YouTube. And I'm sorry, nightmares. It's 34 minutes, but that's just the way I am. <laughs> I'm not sorry at all. God bless y'all. Bye-bye, guys.